Right, hello and welcome back. Unfortunately, the camera cut off. Um, so we're going back to this graph uh, about kinetic energy against threshold frequency. Remember that threshold frequency is the uh, that frequency there is the amount of frequency that you've got to have in order to liberate one of these electrons to, to free it from its trap. Um, now I've just added two extra little bits on here. One is to show uh, that when this electron leaves, if it leaves with some additional energy, then that's kinetic energy. So this amount of energy is half mv squared. And the energy it has to have to get up to here is the energy required to, let's just use this phrase, to liberate a photoelectron. In other words, if we give it just that amount of energy, then that electron is able to just escape our atom and do no more than that. It's not moving very fast, in fact it's moving zero meters per second, therefore it's got no kinetic energy at all. So that's the energy to liberate a photoelectron, and that idea is uh, very important. And we want to know that amount of energy, uh, and that amount of energy has got a name, a special name, and it's called the work function. And it's got a symbol we use phi, and you might have come across that in maths. It's just a circle with a vertical line through it, and it's a Greek letter. And that just means the amount of energy. And I think work function sounds like a complicated name, but work function literally means the energy required to liberate a photoelectron uh, from the atom. Okay. Now, if it's got more energy than the work function, then it's going to have some kinetic energy as well. And that's shown here on our frequency chart against kinetic energy because this gap here is an area below which our photons do not have as much energy as the work function. Above that, up into the ultraviolet part of the spectrum, our, elect our uh, photons have got enough energy that they've got energy greater than the work function. So if I was to plot energy along here, instead of labelling this threshold frequency, I'd label that point as the, the work function there. Notice at that point of the threshold frequency, where the work function is, the kinetic energy is zero. From there on in, if I increase the amount of energy that my photon has, then I increase the kinetic energy, which is increasing this part here. This part here, the work function remains constant. It doesn't matter how much energy my photon's got, that will always be the same. But the additional kinetic energy will increase. Now, I want to show you how Einstein actually came up with that graph. What was the experiment that he actually did? So first off, I want to consider uh, everything being inside a vacuum. Now, this is a piece of work that many people forget to really attribute to Einstein, and in some ways is, is equally, if not more so important than um, his work on general relativity and special relativity. Uh, so this is a vacuum, nothing in there, no air, no moisture to leak away electrons. And what we're going to have is a uh, electrode, uh, and on that electrode we're going to stick some zinc, which means we know that we're going to have some electrons that are inside that zinc. That electrode, I'm going to simplify this somewhat, uh, is then connected up to another electrode on the opposite side, and in between the two I'm going to put an ammeter which measures the current that flows. Now remember that current is just a flow of charge. And what's going to happen is I'm going to shine some red light onto here. And you should be able to predict what's going to happen because it's going to be nothing because this doesn't have enough energy to be um, or have a high enough frequency to have enough energy so that it's got more energy than that work function. So in this one the energy is less than the work function, so nothing happens. The same is going to be true with blue, etc. I'm going to bother drawing it. But when we put on ultraviolet, which, which has got a shorter wavelength, higher frequency, the energy is greater than the work function. So what starts to happen there is our little electrons start to fly out. And they're going to fly all the way over to our 
connecting electrode over here. Which is going to try and catch as many of those electrons, those photoelectrons, as possible. Now I haven't completed the circuit yet deliberately because what Einstein did is he then put the power supply in between the two. Now his circuit is a little bit more complex, you can go and look it up in the book, it involves um, a potential divider and uh, to control the voltage, but this is the basic idea. So he put up a variable voltage uh, inside here, voltage V, and he could change that. And what he did is he made this plate become negative and he made this plate become positive, effectively. And what happened then is as those electrons, free, uh, photoelectrons travelled away from that plate, as they were emitted with the amount of energy E equals a half mb squared with that kinetic energy, they started to travel towards the surface here. And he turned up the voltage just enough so that none of them were able to get here. If they were able to get here, then he'd see that because there would be a current flowing because the electron would come from this plate, would get to this plate, would flow around our circuit and get back to here again. So he increased the voltage until no current flowed. Okay. Now at that point he'd reached something called the stop, which is called the stopping potential. Now you'll have heard of voltage being referred to as potential difference and in this case it's the amount of potential difference that's required to stop that electron reaching this plate here. And they found that this varied depending on um, a couple of things. It, it varied depending on the frequency of the light. Um, it varied depending on the metal. It didn't change with the intensity of the light. So if I put more intense light on there, if I got a, a second uh, photo, uh, second uh, lamp, and I illuminated it. Now all that's going to do is to release that extra electron which is going to do exactly the same thing. So however much I turn up the intensity, it doesn't affect the amount of voltage that's required to stop that electron getting from there to there. Now, from GCSE, you should be aware of the formula for the amount of energy that uh, a charge has if it's put in the voltage. And that formula is E equals QV. Capital V, capital Q, capital E. And in this case, the charge that we've got is the charge on an electron, which we normally write just as E. And we've got our V there, which is our stopping potential. And this E then is the energy per electron. Okay, in terms of kinetic energy, so K E. So I can set that then equal to a half m little v squared. And that is the mass of electron an electron and the speed of the electron. Now I know the mass of the electron, we can do another experiment which will work us out that. It's very difficult for me actually to determine the speed of the electron, but I can work out its kinetic energy because I know the charge on the electron, that's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and I know the voltage because I've got it here, I've set that, I've determined that. What I also know is the amount of energy that went in. Because if I've got a certain frequency, then I can use the formula E equals HF. Okay. Where H is Planck's constant, and go and look that one up. Uh, e is the amount of energy that the photon has, and F is its frequency. 
Now, remember when we escaped the little box, in fact, I'll show you on here. When we escaped the little box, when we escaped out of the well, when we escaped the trap, when we got out of this shell, that electron was able to jump out and it had energy which is equal to half mv squared and it had energy that was equal uh, plus, sorry, the energy from this work function is equal to phi and all of that must be equal to the amount of energy that our photon had going in. So there's our photon going in, E equals HF. And what Einstein did is he put all those three things together so he said in his equation he had E going in A equals HF and E going out equals uh, QV in which case it's going to be EV because it's the charge on an electron plus the work function. And he put those two things equal to each other because of the conservation of energy. And he came up with the, uh, his very famous equation, HF equals EV plus phi, the work function. All that's saying is that that's the energy of the photon. This is the excess kinetic energy and uh, lastly I've got this bit here which was the energy required to escape in the first place. And that's an equation that you need to know, it's an equation that you need to be able to use. Now that phi, that work function, is going to depend on which metal we've used. So for zinc, it's a certain amount. For gold, it'll be a different amount. For aluminium, a different amount again. Um, so that was Einstein's idea. That's a very, very famous experiment that he did. And uh, it showed this link between uh, the kinetic energy the amount of energy to escape, to liberate that electron, and the amount of energy that goes in uh, for a photon.